Hey YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Four and a half thousand hours and seven years ago, the Chinese electric generator in the pyramid was new. I was pretty impressed back in 2006 that somebody would sell me a generator for $160 and guarantee it for two years. So I kept a logbook. And I sort of reverse engineered or analysed the design of the thing and I, I came to the conclusion that it's been designed by an American or a Canadian because it burns 400 cubic feet of air per hour, exactly. 3,080 cubic feet of air per hour goes through its cooling system. All of its measurements work out to even answers if you convert them from the metric that it's built in to the nearest imperial equivalent and then work the equations. So, I've paid more attention to my generator than most people have. And a fortnight ago, when I mentioned to my daughter that I was spending the day gluing the pull start back together, she mentioned it to my son, and he got on the internet. And whereas I was amazed six years ago that this was only $160, with a two-year warranty. Young fellow, me lad, he started bidding at $76.50 for a generator which purported to be a 1,200-watt two-stroke generator. He got it for $107.50 postage free. And he's presented it to me as an early Christmas present. And uh, it's very interesting. Somebody has uh, gone to a fair bit of trouble. It's got a fuel gauge, a completely anonymous brand, X5. It's a model YC1500. It claims a rated power of 1,000, maximum power of 1,200 watts, 50 cycles per second, 240 volts. And it's got a voltmeter. It appears to be a normal Australian 3-pin 240 volt outlet plug. More about that later. And it has a 12 volt output. With voltage protection. And down here we have an air cleaner. And a very familiar looking choke and engine ignition switch. Would you believe... This is the linear descendant. This is obviously the ancestor of the new one. But somebody's taken the lifting handle on top of the fuel tank and replaced it with a tubular handle that fits straight onto the exact same cast legs with the exact same rubber mounts. So it's going to fit perfectly in place. The only major difference is the 12 volt output. Instead of using this plug and coming over here to an 18 amp solar battery charge controller so that the two-stroke generator doesn't cook the batteries while one is watching television on the 240 volt output. The replacement uses this plug arrangement and the cord there was too short. So I've had to splice in a length of cable to connect on to the battery charge controller. When it arrived, I couldn't understand why they had included what appears to be a standard Australian three pin plug. 
However, it turns out that a standard Australian three pin plug won't actually fit the socket. And therefore, this special look alike, which has thin enough tangs, has been supplied. So I had to go and buy and splice in a standard Australian three pin female socket which the standard Australian male connector will in fact fit in so that the generator can run a surge protected power board. There are some differences between the old generator which claims to be an 850 watt generator but in its book of words it admits it can really only deliver 650 watts and it has a two horsepower engine and uh, the engine must be pretty old because the flywheel on this has been designed to have an old-fashioned ignition in there and the engine is fitted with an electronic ignition that's underneath the fuel tank and on that this fuel tank is a four litre tank the new machine has a three litre fuel tank with its fancy fuel gauge but the fan in there on the flywheel is a donut shaped plastic insert somehow fused to the aluminium flywheel but to save metals it's got a composite aluminium and plastic flywheel. Another feature which you'll see on the old unit is a fuel filter and sump underneath the fuel cock. And although the owner's manual with the new single generator which features the side control panel of the old unit, the one that's in the pyramid now, specifically illustrates a fuel cock with a fuel filter under it. Not once, but several times, including giving a description of how to remove the sump and clean it and put it back together. But there's the fuel cock conspicuously lacking any fuel filter there. On the other side of that connection there is an extremely fine gauge plastic mesh on the fuel pickup. Here on the fuel tank we have maximum output 1200 watts, rated output 1000 watts. 8.3 amps at 12 volts. This is the YC 1500 generator, which says it's a 1000 and 1200. Here we have the generator 1500, rating power in KVA 0.75 of a kilovolt, maximum power 0.85 of a kilovolt. It's a, the category is a single crock, two stroke top installed gasoline motor. Okay, so the people who put it together didn't really know how much power it was going to produce in the new configuration. We'll see when I get it into the pyramid. They've obviously done everything they possibly can to reduce the cost and they've apparently increased the performance of the unit. Um, on the other hand, the toolkit's missing a spanner and uh, it's pretty cheap and they didn't do a real good job of packing it. Here we see the tool kit as supplied with a double-ended socket conspicuously absent and this is the condition of the spark plug when it arrived and whatever blow bent the spark plug also fractured a mounting on the cooling air shroud so I've gone in there and repaired that. It, uh, it also put a cut on the spark plug 
shroud, which would have resulted in a possibility of water droplets getting right into the ignition. So I did a fairly serious repair job on that. But all things being equal, at $107.50 with free postage, no warranty, it's a pretty good deal. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with it myself. There was one other self-inflicted problem in the form of the original bridge diode rectifier, which uh, didn't take kindly to having the 12 volt leads briefly cross-connected when I was uh, attempting to fit the unconventional 12 volt plug into the unconventional 12 volt socket the first time and not paying attention to the ends of the leads which at the time were terminating in these bulldog clips of an equal length so uh, yeah while I was pushing this little gadget into there these touched which blew this thing and the replacement cost me $18 so although this thing is still in running condition its 12 volt output is barely two and a half amps when it's producing its designed 240 volts AC so although you could crank the throttle up in order to get more amps of direct current 12 volt if you do that you wind up blowing up lights in the hut on the 240 volt circuit so let's compare this one there we go and believe it or not both of them started first pull to be somewhere around 8 amps and if that 8.3 amps at 12 volts is correct then uh, one hour of watching television on this petrol generator should be equivalent to two hours of full sunlight in the middle of the day from the solar panels on the Tower of Power whereas this poor old thing with its two and a half amps so two and a half amps is up against, oh, we've gone to a float charge. Damn. I just had to reset this and initialize it because the induced current from the spark plug of the generator quite routinely freezes the solar charge controller. I'm hoping the new unit doesn't do that. When it freezes, it means that I have to disconnect the panels, disconnect the battery, reconnect the battery, then reconnect the panels. I just did that and we were getting 3.4 amps. Coming out of the Tower of Power and at the moment it's actually perfectly perpendicular with where the sun is in the sky. There's a little bit of a cloud up there. So, instead of two and a half amps while burning petrol versus three and a half to four amps per hour on sunlight, this promises 8.3. If it even delivers 4.1, it's going to be a quantum leap 
inefficiency. And I guess I'm just going to have to start another logbook. And we'll see how long the new one runs for before I have to go back to using the spare. So at the moment I've got a new generator to run with and a spare sitting there waiting for the day. If I was a perfect hillbilly, I'd go and get one more generator. And that way I'd have a pair and a spare. And the pair would be for myself and the spare would be one that I don't care about so I can lend it to other people and when they break it it won't matter. Right? Proper. Proper hillbilly, that is. A pair and a spare. My father taught me that. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.